Okay? That's what happens when you go number one. And then when you drop in the draft, like Aaron did, you go to a better team. And then what happens? You get better coaching. You get better experience. And you sit behind a Brett Favre. You're never going to sit behind a Brett Favre being the number one pick overall. Because if you had a Brett Favre, you wouldn't be the number one pick overall on that team. That's how it goes. <laughs> Alex Smith finally gets a good coach with John Harbaugh and uh, Jim Harbaugh. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh. He does that's... know how to play football. He does, he does know how to play. It's just everyone before him, was his coaches were retard. And, and that's, that's how it goes, man. If I was a quarterback, I wouldn't want to be number one, especially with the, with the way uh, the CBA is now. It used to be where if you were number one overall pick, you were going to get like $50 million, Aaron, you know, yeah, all, you all of a sudden. It's not like that anymore. I would no. rather just be like brought in – pick like number 15 or, or later. Middle. I think that'd be good. Yeah, middle to, to late round, that would be perfect because you know you're going to be on a good team. And um, yeah, and learn behind a, a quarterback. So if I, could, if I could sit behind someone like Tom Brady or somebody like that, that would be awesome. But I would not want to be number one. I don't envy I'll Joe Burrow that. right now. Joe Burrow and that, that, if the Bengals draft him, his life's over. His career is over. over. Yeah. It's finished. 100%. And, yeah, he's yeah, going to have to pull an Eli Manning now. Should. So, yeah. I mean, I don't like it, and I don't agree with it, but the Bengals is probably the worst organization in the NFL, and that is including, let's see. No, Red the State. Bengals are the worst organization in the NFL, I think. No, because at least, no, Dan <laughs> Snyder, at least at least Dan Snyder, he'll spend money, okay? The guy he isn't cheap. Up. Like He's usually on the wrong guy. He, he just spends <laughs> money incorrectly, <laughs> but at least... <laughs> At least he shows, look, I'm I'm trying. I just am bad with spending my money. But the Bengals, they don't even do that. They don't it's do like, that. That's true. No. There's the money, yeah. They don't. I mean, when Carson Palmer, who played almost his whole career there, says you do not want to go to that, I mean, that that tells you everything. If That's you, yeah. Carson I've never Palmer says that. In my life. Imagine, imagine Tom Brady coming out in like 10 years and saying, you do not want to go to New England. That would be like, what in the world's going on here? Uh, what happened behind no, the scenes? I, I, like, what? That's a scoop. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you know what we know about the Spanos family, right? With the Chargers? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I did um, a lot of research with them. Um, it was very interesting how they just, besides the, the city basically just completely shitting on their own, their own fans, but Spanos was a Trying to be, trying to be one of the cool, one of the cool kids, one of the owners, talking about why oh, matter. You know, I can go to a big market, and then here's a problem now in LA. Nobody, nobody cares about the charges over there. Nobody cares about the charges over there. You basically burned your entire bridge with another city and fan base for what's nothing to do with you anymore. Like, there's no way he, he's able to go back to San Diego. There's, there's no way they can go back to San Diego. He basically just burned everything from them. It's sad. It sucks. I. I normally I'm I live in in West Hollywood. Um, I just happen to be in Bulgaria right now, but no, that, normally that's where I live. And I can tell you right now that nobody wants the Chargers. In fact, it actually no, it's not that nobody wants the Chargers. It's that nobody even knows they're there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's one thing. Yeah. It's one thing for someone to be aware of you and then say I just don't like you. But no, no, it's not even that. It's like we don't even know you exist. It's, who gives a crap, you know? And that's terrible. Now, what they should have done from the very beginning is fine. You want to leave San Diego, whatever. That's your prerogative. I think it's stupid. I think the Chargers is San Diego. It's like synonymous, you know? Yeah, the, they're one and the same. But if you want to leave, they should have been the ones that go to Vegas. I agree. Yeah. I mean, LA, I agree. Is, I... LA is a Raiders town, Okay. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yes, I agree. And, and, and right now, it's more of a Raiders town than it is Rams. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes. I mean, so whose I idea know. was it to do this? I, I, I just. My God. You know what it is? They were saying that um, Jerry Jones had a big say in them going to L.A. And it's like, I'm just speaking. The city of Los Angeles lost teams twice. Already. You, you already lost teams already, already. You lost the Chargers the first time. Which nobody, nobody remembers that you got the Raiders and the Rams there, and they left. So it's like you know, is LA really a foot, really an NFL football town? Like, like I said, if you're not the Lakers or or, or or the 
Dodgers, I mean, I don't really care. I'm like, I don't know how to speak. And I mean, the Angels were good for a little bit, but now they like, you know, it's bad. But it's too much stuff. What well, I've heard is too much stuff to do in LA. It's too, it's like I say, if you're not winning, it's like, why do we care? Why do y'all care? But I think the Rangers yeah. should have, should have, it would have been much easier. The fan base is already there. The entire region loves the Raiders. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why didn't you just keep them there? At least you have to worry about the opposing fans from other teams selling out your stadium, a, a soccer stadium. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Seriously, the Rams do. Like, the Rams can barely um, fill up that Coliseum. And then they do, like, most of other people's fans. Like, <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible. Dude, I, I went to a Rams game this last season. Um, went to see the Rams and Saints. Half the stadium were Saints fans. Like, Saints it. fans in L.A.? I mean, whoa. So L.A. does have football fans. They're just football fans of every other team. They're, 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 everyone's a transplant, mm -hmm. okay? So there's not going to be any loyalty. And look, the Rams went to the Super Bowl and almost beat the New England Patriots, and nobody cared. Nobody in L.A. cared. I can tell you that. Nobody cared. Okay, so what are the Chargers' chances? Okay, what are the, if the Rams, which a Rams have a history there, if they couldn't even get any love and they went to the Super Bowl, what are the? it's a disaster, it's a failure, and yes. they won't admit it. So it, it's, it's, they're going to be moving again, and they're going to end up somewhere um, in a city that used to have football. They're going to end up being like the Oakland Chargers. Like in 10 years, the city of Oakland will probably rebuild itself or whatever. You know how things like this work. Or yeah. they'll end up in some other city that used to have a football team. It'll St. just Louis. be something weird. Yeah, St. Louis or some weird place that like freaks us out. And we're like, what? Like, like, uh, like Columbus, Ohio or some weird place that no one's <laughs> thinking about. You know, Columbus. or... or Columbus, Louisville, China. Kentucky, or or or, or, right. or like Little Rock. I mean, it's just some <laughs> weird city that no one's thought about. Uh, San Antonio, for example, or even El Paso, Texas. Uh, hell, El Paso could probably support the Chargers better than LA would. Yeah, yeah. They could. Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Albuquerque Chargers. I mean, they they they'd be so happy to have a pro team that the whole city would probably be there. It'd probably be like Green Bay, where where the. Uh, mm -hmm. The attendance at a Green Bay game is larger than the population of Green Bay. So yeah. it's like, you know, one of those things. But anyway, my main point was, so we all know how the Spanos family is, right? Yes, so now yeah. we look back in 2004. Now we kind of see why Eli's dad didn't want him going there. He I knew something sense. before everyone else. Now, listen, this is the same family that got rid of Drew Brees. Yeah. You see how that worked out. Yeah. I got really? rid of Drew Brees. is pretty good over there. I remember when that happened, and Drew Brees was an up-and-comer at the time. He'd been around a couple of years, I think, three years or something like that. And then they up and let him go. And then, he, then all of a sudden, Brees is talking to Miami. And I'm like, wait, who are they going to – they're going to put Rivers in? The dude they just dropped? I was like, wow. Okay? And anyone who says that was a good move is an idiot. It wasn't a good move. Just because Rivers gave you some competent quarterback play, what does that mean? I mean, Drew Brees is going to end up being a top 10 all-time problem, you know. So what good what good did Rivers do for you? Now he's gone. And so Eli's dad, Archie, m must have known or saw something that the rest of us wouldn't see for a few years later. It came out no, later. You know, like Ladani, what did Ladani and Tomlinson say? Remember, did you see LT's interview? Um, yeah, I did. He said that um, they spoke to the management basically stole Super Bowls from them because they were incompetent and putting people there. And he's right. Yeah. He's right. They had a lot of good teams during the year. Like, 07, there was 14 and 2, 2007. Um, they had a great team there. Lost. I mean, lost to the undefeated Patriots that year. But there were a lot of years where they were competent, like, oh, there may be a problem, super contender, and they find a way to mess it up. Well, look at 2006, right? And you see what the quarterback they let go, what he did for a city, literally rebuilt a city. Yeah. And you had a 12, a 14, sorry, 14 and two team with the league MVP, right? Imagine if that quarterback who literally resurrected the city that was literally underwater, mm -hmm. what you would have had with that. Yeah. If you had Breeze guess, and LT, I guess the Super easy Bowl. Chicago team who was trash, low key. But yeah. 
Now well, listen, think about this. This is also the same people who fired Marty Schottenheimer after going not. 15 and 1. <laughs> For nerve turning. What? Nerve nerve turner. Nerve turner. I don't think that will ever happen again where a, a, a coach will go 15 and 1 and get fired for it. I mean, that that just shows you what, you know, what that organization is and how they think and what they are and they're always going to be the little embarrassing little brother of LA. The Rams yeah. will always have something there because they are they've had the history. There'll always be something for for them there, but the Chargers have nobody. They have nothing. The only thing they're good for is for people who can't afford to go see an NFL game. They'll go to see the Chargers because the Chargers will have to slash your ticket prices. Yeah. So that's about it. That's sad. It's pathetic. That's it really is. absolutely sad. Especially when if you had stayed in San Diego and done everything right, you eventually would have got a stadium and a new one because they did need one. What's Qualcomm's like 40 years old, right? Yeah. yeah. The thing I can understand but, with them was that yeah. – they were trying to blame the fans, the fans and the people for the taxpayer in San Diego for not paying for it. But it's like you make so much money, like billions of dollars. If they really wanted to, you could have built your own stadium with your own money and then made so much money back. It was like I, I don't understand why. And then the NFL trying to bully, bully these cities and say, oh, if you, if you don't buy a new stadium or a Super Bowl won't come to your city or or some stuff like that, you know, because they have like warm, they have this infatuation with warm weather cities or mm-hmm. new brand new dome stadiums, brand new state of the art stadiums. And it's like, it makes so much money. Like, why do you feel that you want the taxpayers to foot the bill? Like, look at St. Louis. St. Louis is still paying for the Edward Jones Dome and no one's playing there. And XFL team's playing there. And they, even so, they were still willing to build a Riverside Stadium in St. Louis, and the Rams still left. <laughs> like, how you, how you pay for a stadium for a team that's not even there anymore? <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. Like, a lot of these owners, a lot of times, like, well, listen, I don't know how you're trying to, like, handcuff the um, these cities to foot a bill for a stadium. It doesn't make any sense. Like, Oakland is a prime example. Oakland just lost the Golden State Warriors and they lost the Oakland Raiders. And they were going to lose the Athletics if Rob Manfred said, if you don't build a stadium, we're leaving too. So it's like, you know, I don't understand. I understand. They can build their own stadium if they wanted to, but I don't understand why they want to. It's ridiculous. Now, listen, if you're an owner, okay, and no, Dean Spanos isn't um, liquid capital. He did, he's not rich enough to build a stadium by himself, okay? That's, that's obvious. But the NFL has a program, too, where they will invest and other owners will invest, but they'll make it back. You'll make the money back. Like you just said, OK, you build a stadium in San Diego out of your, you know, you get your own funding, you get investors and things like that. If you can just get like 70 to 80 percent of it, the taxpayers will front the rest of it. They will pay yeah. it. They will. Almost any city council will say, okay, so you don't even need 100%. You don't even need that. You just need to show that you're taking the majority of the hit, right? You get one Super Bowl s- hosted there, and you're already starting you're to replenish the coffers. Yeah. You're yeah. already starting right. to. Yeah. And, and, and no, they left because they didn't give a crap. They, they, they left because they're, they're just idiot, piece of crap idiots. And, and the reason I call them idiots is because it was a bad business move. It was it a was. bad financial move, and I, I, they can say whatever they want that the the team value rose because of it. No, the team value only rose because the NFL is in LA, not because the Chargers are in LA. There's a difference there, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That's it. They know that the Super Bowl is going to be in that stadium, eventually. Per, well, like what next few years, right? Oh, and it's going to yeah. keep coming back and keep coming back. That's why the value of your team went up. It's because of the stadium that you're going to be in. And they don't – it's amazing that the NFL even let this happen. But, you know, hey, you know what? Everyone hates the Patriots and everybody hates these NFL teams for making the taxpayers. You know, Mr. Kraft paid for our stadium, you know? Yes, he did. So isn't he the only owner who owns the stadium? Uh, and Jerry the, Jerry owns and Jerry, Jerry yeah. right? Sure. Uh, most of Jerry it, yeah. Yeah, but that's it, right? And the rest of them are all, they relied on taxpayer funding and uh, for most of it, I think. But, you know, people hate the Patriots, but there's a lot of things about us. You know, people complain. They say they don't like greedy athletes. 
but yet they hate Tom. They don't like athletes who take up all the cap, but yet all of our players never get max dollars okay. almost. Almost Hello? never, but you hate us, right? They say that they, they, they hate owners who are greedy. Well, our owner paid for the stadium. You know, they, they said they hate uh, players who don't earn it and don't work hard and just think that they deserve everything. Well, that's Tom. Well, that's Cassius Marsh about that. Are we not fun, right? Yeah, Cassius Marsh. <laughs> As Lane Johnson, yeah. we're not fun, right? Yeah. We're boot camp, right? Well, well it's where's worked. the hard work at? It's worked 20 years. So why not? Just, it's just saying I don't understand, but but uh, everything that we are as an organization is what people say that they don't like about pro sports. We're the anti version of that, and yet everyone hates us. It's very bizarre, you know. It, so. Hypocrisy is at its highest, a hundred percent. It's one of the symptoms right. of BDS. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Are we up to a new grade with that now? I think the last thing I remember was like grade four. Is it like a five or six now? Like no. Well, there's there's a grade five, but it's called uh, it's called uh, stage Rob Parker. So instead, <laughs> instead of a number, it's it's it's, you know, it's like it's technically five, but it's Rob Parker is what it's called. So that's on his own because that guy's a yeah. different breed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He might be another inspiration for me because I hated listening to him so much back in the early part of the decade. I think I almost broke my TV once. I think. Forgot what he said. I think it was before 2014, before the, you know, you, you the, um, he's not good anymore, his other shit. Like, it was before that. But You're Parker probably referring to yeah. either, either, either the, uh, after we lost to the Giants in 2011, the, he will never, Win and no, he'll never be back in another Super Bowl. Oh, no way, no, no how. Way, no how. That happened in 2012, or oh, the wow. racist rant he had against RG3. Um, oh, yeah. as, <laughs> and then he got fired for it. It's like, who would touch him with a 10 foot pole after that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand that. That bugged me out too. 